Um, so unlike you guys, I was a little bit stressed about the talk and probably not lethargic. So now I am super jazzed up uh, and ready to give this presentation. Um, but on a serious note, um, it's an incredible honor to be standing up here. And it's, you know, I'm really grateful to be presenting in front of this group. Uh, it's an incredible collection of brilliant people that are game changers and, and, and deeply passionate about, about the human brain. And, and for that, I'm, I'm grateful. Um, so I'm going to start with a question uh, that I've been trying to answer for the past five years. How do we better foster research and innovation for closed loop, non-invasive brain machine interfacing? Let's see if this works. Nope. That's the one. Cool. So towards low cost neural interfaces. No, low cost closed loop neural interfaces. So I am the CEO of a company called OpenBCI. I'm also a research affiliate at the MIT Media Lab uh, and former director of advanced interfaces at, a comp at an AR company called Meta. So my uh, exploration into BCI began as a master of fine arts at the school Parsons. Um, and at that time, I had no idea what neuroscience was. I had no idea what EEG devices were. Um, and I ended up uh, discovering it through open source code, accessible information on the internet. Uh, at the time, I had a close friend who had suffered a, a severe neck injury. And my grandma had just passed away um, from a neurodegenerative disease. And so at the time, it was kind of this perfect storm. Um, and the, the open source technology that I was exposed to uh, basically uh, allowed me to begin this journey. And it was really love at first sight. Uh, since that point in time, I haven't turned back. Um, so my company, OpenBCI, really is a manifestation of that mission, which is uh, making tools accessible, uh, specifically for neuroscience, uh, uh, to people who wouldn't otherwise be uh, you know, uh, taught about the space or able to make an impact on the space. So five years ago, I co-founded a company called OpenBCI. Uh, we're a for-profit company selling open source hardware. So a lot of times uh, people ask me, how do you run a company uh, that, that's based on open source? Uh, and my reaction to that is, we sell things. Um, so uh, we uh, ship hardware to 80 countries around the world, or more than 80 countries around the world. We've, we've shipped over 15,000 products. Um, and we have annual revenue that has a nice little trend line and, and actual profit. And that's what we use to keep expanding the business. So our mission, uh, I can't see anything here, so I'm looking here, um, is to lower the barrier of entry to human computer interface technologies while ensuring that these technologies are adopted into the consumer landscape in an ethical way that protect, protects user agency and mental health. There we go. Cool. So OpenBCI's current tools, one of them, you're looking at it. Um, we basically have a suite of PCBs. Uh, who here is familiar with Arduino? So in a sense, we are the Arduino of biosensing. In fact, our, our firmware is based on Arduino. You can work from the Arduino IDE to upload code, um, toggle things in the firmware. Um, but then on top of that, we have accessories and electrodes. And I really like to think of OpenBCI as the playground for wannabe cyborgs. So um, you know, we, we very much have a Lego model where we'll ship you a full kit, but you, the intention is for you to break it down, take the building blocks apart, and build something new that we have never thought of before. So this here is an example of our software. So all of this is open source. You can dig into the guts of this. You can um, use this software for basic signal processing, uh, routing it to other applications and software through basic network protocols like OSC, UDP, LSL. Um, but once again, this is kind of a, you know, really just a starting point for people. And, and the goal is to get this technology into the hands of as many people as possible. So what started out as a project to inspire uh, students and researchers for low-cost research uh, ended up yielding a lot of really key uh, industry customers. So this is a slide that's just some of the major tech companies that are actually working with OpenBCI technology. Um, you know, and I think this is really kind of an indication of where this, this industry is headed, is that you know, people are really thinking deeply about how we integrate neuroscience and the brain into technologies at scale. You know, this, you know, it's going to be ubiquitous in, in five years, and I believe that non-invasive is really uh, what's going to get it there. So what's next? What's next for the industry? What's next for OpenBCI? Um, you know, today, I really like this diagram. I think it really kind of defines our current relationship with technology as well as our future relationship with technology. Today, we have uh, a pretty conscious relationship 
with technology, uh, that middle uh, back and forth. So we have conscious inputs, we have digital inputs, you know, priorities and things like that. We have feedback, we can use text, we can use buttons, we can use voice. Um, but where we're going is this kind of subconscious loop, the closed loop of you being able to send information to your computer subconsciously and it even being able to subconsciously present feedback and potentially alter mental states. So, you know, uh, to, to, you know I, th I think one of the best uh, examples of this currently is neurofeedback. So Muse, I'm gonna give you guys a shout out. I love your product. Um, but Muse is a great example of an audio neurofeedback application where um, they're improving the ability to meditate by sending real-time audio neurofeedback to the user that in, then, in turn allows them to better understand their state of med meditation and, and you know, alter it thereafter. Um, at this point in time, um, you know, through my past experiences and current projects, I've, I've really explored integrating uh, biometrics into head-mounted displays. I think that given the current state of the, the HMD industries, AR and VR, um, we have this really interesting opportunity to use those technologies and those industries to embed sensors and also provide audio, audio visual feedback, which are arguably the, the most effective ways of neuromodulation and also the least non-invasive. So this summer, uh, we're onboarding, we, we, we have a really exciting uh, collaboration that recently developed with the Fluid Interfaces group, uh, Patty Mays, uh, and one of her PhD students, uh, Guillermo Bernal. And so he's gonna be coming on board this summer to work on a, um, a, a complex integration of different biometric sensors, including GSR, EEG, PPG, eye tracking, um, with uh, 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 most likely a VR uh, headset, probably the Vive. So you know, where we're going and what we're trying to build now is a low-cost multimodal BCI uh, plus mixed reality. So the idea would be to provide these schematics, keep the designs open source, publish the designs, publish the Unity uh, and Unreal support, um, and then also uh, really focus on the time locking of the, of the, of the feedback loop. Um, and with that, I'd like to say thank you and put the question back up there. So thank you very much. Cool.